for today's lecture. This is uh, again chapter 11, part two, uh, time rate of consolidation calculation. And just a very quick review of what we covered last time. So last time, basically we went over this conceptual model behind Tersagi's 1D consolidation theory. So this spring cylinder model. So this is a model I used the last time basically to uh, motivate this 1D consolidation, consolidation theory so a key takeaway from this conceptual model is that the settlement at a particular time is related to the amount of water drained out and it's related to the pore water pressure or specifically the excess pore water dissipation throughout the depths. Okay. Then Tosaki's solution basically solves for the excess pore water pressure dissipation and then we related that to the uh, degree consolidation. And just very quickly, this is the governing equation uh, in Tosagi's 1D consolidation theory. The unknown here is U, which is basically the, that access pore water pressure. And the solution of this PDE is basically U as a function of depth Z and also as a function of time. Okay, so that's the access pore water pressure throughout the depths at a particular time. And then we link that to uh, consolidation, to settlement. And so that's what the solution looks like. Again, it's a function of Z and T, depth and time. And in this solution, uh, this is a pretty important factor. So we're going to use this actually quite often today in our calculation, that's a time factor. So if you look at this solution, the pore water pressure is a function of this time factor, T sub V. So I'll go over that in more detail today. And um, so in using Tosaki's solution, as I mentioned, we link that excess pore water pressure U to consolidation. Okay. There are two types of uh, degree consolidation we're talking about in this course. The first one is we call U sub Z. So this is the degree consolidation at a particular depth in your consolidating layer. And then the second, uh, I highlighted this one here. So we're going to calculate this actually more often. This is an average degree consolidation we call capital U for the entire consolidating layer. Okay, so basically we get just one number for the entire consolidating layer. So that's called the average degree consolidation. And it's defined as the settlement at time T. So basically that's the total settlement at time T over the final consolidation settlement. Okay, so that's the definition. And for this average degree consolidation, since it's again linked to the excess pore water pressure, which is basically Tosaki's solution, then we can link this capital U to that time factor as well. Okay. So this is, a, this is basically the solution, but we're, what we're going to use actually today is either the equation on the right-hand side, these two sets of equations. So this is equation 11.66. And the second one is 11.67, okay. So we're going to actually use either these two equations. Uh, in these two equations, basically, we are linking time factor T sub V to the average degree consolidation, that's capital U, and from which we can get the consolidation settlement. And or, as you're going to see through examples today, we're going to use this table 11.7. So again, this is basically TV versus U. Okay. If, you, if you know U, you can find TV, or if you know TV, you can find U. Okay. So this is basically a tabular form of that two equation, of these two equations. Okay. So we're going to use most of the time this table here in today's uh, calculation. So that's a very, very quick review of what's covered in the previous lecture. All right, uh, so for today, First, I want to uh, basically go over these different types of drainage uh, drainage types here. The first one, uh, this is what we call one-way drainage. So it's important to distinguish these two types of drainage because in your calculation, you have to pick the correct drainage path or correct maximum drainage path. For one-way drainage, we have sandy layer on top so whenever you see sandy layer, gravel layers, so these layers with high permeable material, it basically means those, these are basically permeable layer. So you have drainage from the top, so permeable. And then we have some very impermeable material, in this case, bedrock at the bottom for this case. 
So the only way out for water is through that permeable sandy field on top. So this is a one-way drainage. So you can see it's going one way upward. And for this one-way drainage, last time I said the distance here. So this is your um, HDR in that time factor definition. So that's the maximum drainage path or maximum drainage distance. So this is one-way drainage. And on the right-hand side, this is called two-way drainage. So for two-way drainage, we have sandy field on top and some permeable layer at the bottom. For this case, water can go both ways. Therefore, the maximum drainage pass is actually half of the thickness of this consolidating layer. So that's HDR. That's the maximum distance water needs to travel to get drained, basically. So that's HDR. And the other, for the upward side, that's HDR as well. So your drainage path is basically half of the total thickness of the consolidating layer. Okay. So HDR is one half of the total thickness, or the total thickness is twice HDR. Okay. So it's very important, again, to distinguish these two types of drainage when you are doing time rate of consolidation calculation. The other thing we need in time rate consolidation calculation is this coefficient of consolidation, C sub V. And these two are most commonly used methods, uh, logarithm of time and square root of time methods. Okay. And for both of these methods, basically what you, uh, what you do in this calculation essentially you're using the TB definition. So that's what actually what you're using to get coefficient consolidation. This comes from, this comes from that uh, TB definition. So that time factor, remember, is defined as CVT over HDR square. So in both methods, basically, you're using this equation here the difference is what small t to use. In the logarithm of time method, you are trying to find this small t, we call t50, that corresponds to 50% degree consolidation. In the square root of time method, you're trying to find t90. So that's t corresponding to 90% degree consolidation. Okay, so that's the difference. So this t90 here. And for different degree of consolidation, you remember you have different time factor TV okay, from that table 11.7. Okay, so that's the difference. And for both methods, uh, I've posted a short video. So for both, uh, for this logarithm time and square root time method, you can check out these two videos. So it shows the detailed step-by-step -step calculation.